Hi, welcome to the vlog. Just a quick question, what should you be doing right now? Because when I watch vlogs, I tend to be procrastinating, so I was just catching up with Casey Neistat. I wanted to talk about today very quickly. I promised to get back onto saxophone again and do a Q&A as well today. There are some real whingers sometimes on this channel, guys. You know, be positive. You know, this is kind of supposed to be fun. I wanted to talk about something I'm working on with my Cambridge saxophone students, which is Blue 7 by Sonny Rollins. Let me play it for you. I assume it's been really awkward at the moment. Oh dear. This is just gonna have to restart. So just to recap the last couple of days, uh, had a, had took kind of a couple of days off, um, Kate's parents were here, and then yesterday I spent the whole day planning for the visit of the UN Secretary General to London tomorrow, Wednesday, today, if you're watching, you know what I mean. Where I do quite a bit of work for, Central Hall Westminster was where the first meeting of the United Nations took place in 1946. So it's kind of really exciting, really interesting things to do. I don't know what's going on with this. Anyway, I'll splice Blue 7 in no matter what. What I wanted to talk about was Sonny Rollins' use of the augmented triad. Now, an augmented triad is simply one, three, sharp, five. So, the prerequisite to that is you've got to know your major scales. So let's kind of, sorry, major arpeggios, really. So let's kind of work it on one of the ones Sonny does the first one, which is an E-flat augmented. So an E-flat triad, major triad, just taking a step back, would be E-flat, G, B-flat. But if I sharpen the fifth, I make the B flat into a B natural. It has a really distinctive sound. It's quite unnerving to a certain extent. It's had the first. <clears throat> The first time Sonny deploys it is like this. Okay, and it's it's really kind of, it sticks out and then later on over the two five at the end, um, he pulls out an A augmented. And so he's really, really deploying it in that first chorus. What we're dealing with, of course, is the solo rather than the head of Blue 7. So one of the things you could start with is, first of all, obviously knowing your major arpeggios. The second thing is turning them into augmented, which kind of really, really makes your ear do some work. So kind of start with B flat. <laughs> Yeah, just run them, you know, round and round and round, you know, running them in semitones or around the circle of fifths, those kind of ideas. Just really getting it so that you can play them on demand. That's the, the first thing to be able to do. And then you want to understand how Sonny Rollins uses them. So um, in this version of Blue 7, he's just deploying it. So you've got the opening. <laughs> That's the first four bars, and this kind of leads into the four chord. Sorry. So he kind of he's deploying an E flat augmented over an F chord. Okay, stay with me here. Okay, so you've got to think. Okay, what's E flat augmented in relation to F? Well, it's the seventh. It's the off the le off the flattened seventh because it's a dominant seventh. So F A C E flat, and I'm thinking of that off that chord. Okay. And then at the end, he's deploying a, an A augmented over a D minor chord. Okay, so he's thinking, I'm going to play the augmented triad off the dominant of the two chord. If that has completely lost you, I apologise. Uh, you need to go back and brush up on some more theory. Effectively, what we're looking for is a pattern of how Sonny's deploying it. Because that's the, how we can learn to be able to deploy it ourselves. Like I said, uh, there's a lesson I've put on the Cambridge Saxophone Facebook page. Address facebook.com Cambridge Saxophone, I think. Um, I should really know that, but it's early in the morning. And, you know, 
you need to understand how they deploy it, but don't deliberately do it yourself all the way through. Just be aware that it's augmented. There's another transcription project we did a long time ago of uh, Les de Young with a Billie Holiday solo um, at the end of uh, an All of Me and Prez plays. <laughs> He goes up an A minor chord, A minor 7, and then comes down the B flat augmented. And so it's not something that I hear a lot of people talking about the augmented triad, but it is something that you find in a lot of top players' vocabulary. So it's really worthwhile getting to grips with that augmented triad. First of all, then kind of listen and transcribe examples where it's taken place. And then thirdly, in your practice, try and deploy it in certain places. But the important thing to remember is don't, if you can avoid it, don't kind of dive straight into it on a gig. You know, don't deliberately think, I'm going to play an augmented there. Allow it to come out organically and it will start to actually sound like improvise great music as you want it to so that's that's a little tidbit there for you on the augmented let's see if i can get black blue seven up and running <laughs> Isn't it amazing how often just restarting the thing always seems to allow it to work? Anyway, we're taking it from about a minute in. Great blues track this, not often played. God, it was if I could play it. Here we go. Here's the first augmented. And here's the second augmented. They passed in a flash, aren't they? But that's the kind of thing you've got to get to when you're uh, studying kind of arpeggios and transcribing. Now, on uh, this vlog, I was talking, trying to see whether I could vlog with this, but um, I think the battery's just gone. So hopefully I got a couple of seconds on that. Anyway, Div King said that I should be able to get a much better picture if I keep it out of the housing. Now obviously I need to keep it in the housing for doing waterproof shots like I did on... on um... It's a great camera, but it's damn fiddly to get right. Mm, I have started drinking peppermint tea as part of my new health regime. It tastes good. Just a problem when Katie puts milk in it. It's been a while since I've done a Q&A, but I wanted to finish today's vlog with a very, very brief Q&A. And first up, Janelle West says, work song is awesome. Thank you very much, Janelle. You are very, very kind. Thank you so much for your kind words on support. Jared Locke asked me, hey Dan, kindly asking, how do you prevent saxophone embouchure with air leaks? I get air leaks after several times playing. I'm guessing you're talking about around here, Gerard, and are you talking about the soprano or uh, alto tenor? Because it kind of varies. Obviously tenor with a big mouthpiece, it's very difficult to get those. Soprano, it happens a lot. Check out loads of different embouchure exercises. You, what you've got to do is keep these corners back, okay? Chang, you see the creases in my face here? These are the kind of things you're aiming to get to use the cheek muscles for your embouchure. But really, if you can, try and get yourself a teacher sorted out because a teacher, a good teacher who knows the way around the correct saxophone embouchure should be able to give you some exercises to iron that out. Um, if you really want to know about a book, the Dave Liebman developing a personal saxophone sound is quite intense, but does talk and will hopefully solve a number of your problems. But essentially, it's the corners back who show you. You get what I mean. I'm looking really daft in the camera there. Yusef Tawel said to me, uh, I've been hearing bits and pieces of Dell City Blues and of your vlogs recently. I wonder if you've been playing it on gigs recently. I want to see it. I haven't played it on gigs recently. I did play it in third year college with my recital. It's bloody hard. Um, and I've still got bits of it in there. If I, I nicked a little bit of Brecker's intro for Lipstick on a Pig, which is kind of formed into Lipstick on a Pig, so that mean me, might be where you've heard some of it. Um, if I go back through a Brecker phase again, I'll definitely play it again for you. Ron was asking, be me nice to ask me a non-jazz related question for ages. What frame rate do you use for your time lapses? Most of the time on the time lapses, Ron, I am using the iPhone 7 Plus or I'm using the Lumix with the time lapse feature on it or I just use the DSLR and speed it up in Final Cut. I just, 
I've said this before, I don't spend, I don't want to spend a lot of time fiddling about with devices because it stops me from being creative. It's the same thing with saxophones. I want an instrument that I can pick up, play and get the results I want out of it. I don't want to spend a lot of time fiddling with it. Um, and Alfonso says, why are you using the sax plugger? I presume you mean the, um, the thing that's attached to my tanner now, if I get out of the way, the little uh, reflection screen. I did talk about it in the la uh, last vlog, but one, or maybe it was the last vlog, I can't remember. But basically, I'm using it because it allows me to hear myself better when I'm on gigs, because often I'm very close to the drums. And I felt, even listening back to the Facebook Live post, that my sound was so much better on Thursday night because I was playing softer. And the reason I was playing softer is I was able to hear myself, I was able to hear the nuances that were going on, and I was, yeah, I just, I'm just so pleased I've got it. I'm going to try it on a gig on a week on Friday uh, and see if I get similar results. And if I do, then I'm probably going to play with it all the time. It just, at the end of the day, if I'm getting a nice sound out of the instrument, that's always what I'm aiming for. Anyway, that's about all we've got time for on the Q&A today and the vlog. So thank you very much for watching. If you are already a subscriber, you know I love you so, so much. Uh, if you're not a subscriber yet, then please do come along and join our subscribers. I normally do try and do two to three videos a week, balancing between different saxophone ideas, being in the life of a professional musician and just some random stuff that I just end up doing during the week. The more subscribers I have, the better I can make the videos for you. And don't forget, the 3,000th subscriber to my channel will get two free signed CDs and maybe a lot of other goodies. And I would dearly, dearly love to get to 5,000 by the end of the year. But that's about all for today. I will be back again later this week with another hopefully very exciting, informative and honest vlog. But thank you very much for watching and I will see you very, very soon.